It is time, guys. It is time to paint the first loyalist. Saul Tarvitz himself, Captain the Emperor's Children, 10th Company. I'm so excited for this. This model is beautiful. He is one of my favourite characters. He's one of your favourite characters, one of everybody's favourite characters in the Horus Heresy. And he's finally got his own model. I'm really excited to paint this one for you, and I hope you're excited to see this one. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just kick right off. We're, gonna, we're not going to mess about telling you how great he is anymore. We're going to start painting him in. And the first place we're going to start is on the armour. Now, just before I do that, actually, it's a good point to point out that this has been primed in grey sear. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to get in and paint that armour. And the colour that we're going to use is Shaiish Purple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Shaiish Purple on our brush like this and I'm using a small layer brush so I get lots and lots of control and I'm just going to start painting this shayish purple all over his armor like this. And it's important to note out that unless you've got the box art in front of you pretty much anywhere where there's like gilded detail on the large panels so like here and here on his arm, sharp arm guards and on his shoulder pads. The actual colour of that armour piece is going to be white. It's not purple as well. So you don't have to do every single armour panel. You just have to do basically the large open flat ones. Like this. I'm just taking it very steady. Completing it a section at a time. So that I get a nice smooth coat and I'm just moving that contrast paint around until I'm happy with it. So example, we've got one here. I just want to come up to that detail, but I don't want to do the other side of it because that background on there is actually white. So I just want to Make sure that I finish off this armor panel. I have to negotiate my brush in here to do just that. Like so. So I'm just going to go around picking out all these armor panels like this.
with that done, we've now got some really cool looking purple armor. But what we're gonna do before we move on is we actually want to restore a little bit of warmth and we want to smooth out any really dark patches on this model. So the color that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly 10 parts contrast medium to one part Zerius purple mix. This will give us a really nice warm kind of purple-esque glaze type thing. You can see there on my thumb. And what we want to do is we want to use this on the flats of the panels of the model, whilst avoiding any recesses and any edges. Because we want this to just basically help us, like I said, re-establish some warmth in the model, but not too much. But we also don't want to lose any of the kind of contrasty elements. So you can see like that, it's already nice and warm, like that. So you just want to go around doing it like this, across all of these purple armor panels. See there, I'm just avoiding that edge. I'm not going all the way around either, because I don't need to. Because there's not the shade is settled on the underside of the leg. We want all these different tones in the purple to come out so you can see like that that's looking pretty awesome so we just want to go around like this picking out these panels like that and then we're going to come back and so with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to use some gene stealer purple we're going to use this to highlight all of that purple now we've done a lot of purple armor so it might seem like there's going to be a lot of highlights but there actually isn't that many because a lot of it is just flat panels what you do want to do is any any kind of sharp edges that you do have, you just want to go around with this Jean Steeler purple, picking out those edges. Like this. You can see, put it there on the hand. Got quite a large one here. So, what you can also do, if you're feeling up to it, you can draw a little highlight going around the inside of each of these panels. Like that. Just following along with any of the armor trim. Like that. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna move on and we're gonna paint in all of the soft joints on his armor. I'm not gonna do all the black details at once. There's method to the madness is that we wanna kind of focus on getting these kind of, kind of this model done by section. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the soft joints. We've got a soft joint here in his arm. We've got the soft joint in the back of his leg. And we've got the ribbing underneath his kind of torso and areas like that. The strap going across him is going to be black and this is also going to be black. So you could do this now if you want to, but I'd recommend leaving it to a little bit later because we are going to do a slightly different recipe for that. But what we are also going to do because we didn't do it at the time, is we're gonna paint this section up here on the backpack with the black Templar as well. I'm just gonna put it over the top of that shyish purple, so it's a nice dark midnight black. So we're just going all over with this black Templar. Make sure that we work it into all of those Little holes on the back as well. There we go.
like that. So now we're going to use this black templar in these areas. It's a little too much on the brush. Just trying to be a little bit careful around all that purple. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some thinned down Corax white and we want to use this to basically paint in all of the white armor panels. Now, we're doing this first because we don't want to like do the gold and then pick around it afterwards. And we could just leave it as gray here, but we want these to be nice and bright. So when we come to putting the apothecary white over the top, most of the work is done for us. So we won't have to do any re-layering or anything like that because they're quite recessed. Now, if we put the apothecary white straight on it, it's just going to be nothing but kind of, well, the darker gray of the apothecary white, which wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but you want it to be a nice, bright, clean white as befits an emperor's child or an emperor's children space marine. I've never known whether you would call a single emperor's children space marine an emperor's child. Just going all over like this. And it doesn't matter if you get this on all of the detail. Because we are going to be going over that with gold. And with that Corax white pad, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some apothecary white. I'm going to use this just to shade over all of those white armor panels. And you'll see what I mean about if we hadn't put that Cor Corax white down first. If you do this straight over Grace here, it comes out a lot darker. And with that done, it's now time to paint in all the gold. And well, if you've looked at your box art, there is a lot of gold. So we're not going to waste too much time talking. What we're going to do is just going to start painting. And the color that we're going to be using is Retributor Armor. Now we want to do all the gold at once. So we've got this area here on the sword like that. But what we also want to do is we want to pick out all of the kind of trim on all of the white armor panels that we've just painted yeah th there's a lot i mean look there's a lot of gold so we're just going to go around doing all of that gold with this retributor armor and then we're going to come back And so finally, we've got all of that gold done and there is a lot of it, as you can see. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna shade that gold. And just before I do though, however, I have made a little bit of a mistake. You see this area here on the shoulder pad, this little kind of bit, that's supposed to be a papery color. So I'm not gonna shade that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint that different color. And that is, goes for the same as this paper stuff down here on his leg that you can see just there, which is why I haven't painted that in gold, but it was too late to save it. <laughs> so don't worry, it's not the end of the world, but we are gonna go over that. So we don't need to shade that bit. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna shade the rest of those gold details. And the color we're gonna use for this is Fire Slayer Flesh, because we want a nice warm, sort of antique gold to put all over the top of this gold. And what we're gonna do is just wanna start painting this Fire Slayer Flesh all over the top. And the reason we're not using Gilliman Flesh is it's just a little too pinky for my taste. Um, and this Firestone Flesh adds that kind of little bit of an element of brown in there. Because, you know, this is this is a, this is an old suit of armor. This is from the days of antiquity of the 31st millennium, not the 41st millennium. So we're using this 
fire slayer flesh instead. It still gives it a little bit of a pinky vibe, as you can see, but uh, it's just a little bit more muted, I think. Whereas the Gilliman, Gilliman flesh really does just make it very, very, very rose goldy type thing. So we're just gonna, I'm just trying to avoid that. So you just wanna go over all of this gold like this, and then we will come back. And so with all that Fire Slayer flesh applied, it's now time to re-layer it, to get that color and that brightness back into it. So the color that we're gonna make is gonna wreck a roughly two parts Liberator Gold to one part Retributor Ramen. That's because we still want that warm, yellowish, reddy gold texture to the highlight. So what we do is we make that mix on our palette. We add a little bit of water just to improve the flow. And then we just start re-highlighting and layering up all of that gold once again. You see, just like that. Like so around here on that shoulder pad, we've done that edge like that. We wanna do the inside edge and all that kind of thing. Similarly up here on the equator, I'm actually gonna use a slightly smaller brush for this. Get out here, medium layer brush. You're not welcome. So we take our little mix with our little brush some of that off and just around here on that aquila you just start edge highlighting it but then when it comes to this wider open space here we want to relayer this area whilst just leaving where that shade has settled in the darkest recesses like that sort of thing there to make it nice and bright so you just want to go around like this picking out all of these areas and then we'll come back. And with that done, our gold is very nearly finished. Well, apart from this bit on the cloak, but we haven't we haven't done all the shading and the highlighting on the cloak yet because well, we've got to do the rest of the cloak first. So we're just leaving that as it is for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish off all of that gold and we're going to make a roughly two part Stormhose Silver to one part Retributor Armour mix to make this really, really lovely pale white gold color. And we're going to use this to highlight the sharpest edges of all that gold, like that. Just to give it that super shiny feel. And you don't need to do all of the edges. As I say, you just want to pick out the sharpest ones. And pick out areas like the rivets as well. This is just for wherever the light catches on that arm and you can see already on that shoulder pad, it's just made it look super bright. Like so. so. You just want to go around like this and then we'll come back. So with that done, all of our gold is now finished and I think you'll agree, it looks awesome and shiny. Look at the way the light's reflecting off of those shoulder panels. Ah, marvelous. So what we're gonna do now is gonna move on and we're gonna paint the cloak. We're not going to do the silver just yet, we're going to do that a little bit later. We're going to paint the cloak first and we're going to start with the interior of the cloak. Now the colour that we're going to use for this is Flesh Terrors Red. And we want to be really careful here as we do this. And pick a good place to start. I'm going to start just here by the gun. So I just want to make contact with the model and then in these nice big broad brush strokes, just start pulling it down as the Flesh Terrors Red comes all the way around onto this folded part of the cloak. It's kind of billowed backwards. Like so. And with that Flesh Terror's Red applied, what we now want to do is we want to use some Apothecary White. And we're going to use this to shade the cloak. What we want to do is we want to basically take a fair amount of this on our brush, and I'm using a medium layer brush. And we just want to make contact with the model up here by the backpack. And we just want to pull this out in these nice big broad brush strokes. And we just want to get this all over the cloak. We want this to be a nice smooth coat. So we just want to take our time, making sure that we get this all over 
whole cloak like I'm doing here. It doesn't matter too much if you get any of this on that gold, you can always relayer it because we haven't we haven't finished. Shading and highlighting it yet, so it's all good. See, so we're just very carefully making sure we're getting a nice smooth coat all over. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some Corax White. We want to use this to highlight that cloak. So we just want to pick out all of the sharp areas, avoiding anywhere where the shade is settled. Like this. And with those highlights applied, what we've actually started doing, I completely forgot and I was, had the camera off, so I do apologize. What we've also started doing is we've been layering up the cloak with the Corax right white as well. So you can see here, and actually we had those edge highlights established and then we've painted in the Corax white just to give this a really bright, bright white cloak finish. And the way that we've been doing that is we're again, continuing with the Corax white is we're gonna just start down here actually on this, on this fold here. You wanna hold it at an angle which you're comfortable at and you just wanna start doing these large brush strokes just heading down again just avoiding where the shade is settled so you can see there's a little bit of shade around where that edge highlight is and of course there's quite a large bit in there which we want to avoid so you want to leave a little bit of the apothecary white over the gray sear shining underneath so you can see like that and then we just want to block in the rest of this area coming up to where the trim is you want to follow it round like that once again just leaving a gap you just want to make sure that you block this in and sometimes it can take a couple of coats just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and a nice strong white color so once again getting close to that trim I want to leave some of this darker shade in there. Like that. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to use some pallid witch flesh to once again just do a little highlight. the sharpest edges. Like that. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to use some Thins Down Wild Rider Red. We want to use this to highlight the red parts of the cloak. And there aren't a lot and there's just this little bit of here and there's the area around that fold in the cloak and then you've got the area just here as well that you want to do like that sort of thing and so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Liberator Gold. We're going to use this just to re-establish the gold on this trim. And I could use Retributor Armor, but Apothecary White has actually done a little bit of shading for us. So now what we want to do is brighten it up. Like so. 
I'd say with that Liberator Gold added to that Retributor Armor of Shaded with the Apothecary White, it's nice and bright. So what we want to do is we want to add a sort of a sort of non-metallic metal effect, but not really. So what we want to do is we want to take a little bit of Fire Slayer Flesh, not very much at all on our brush. And we want to, out from the areas where there's the, the darker shading, we just want to add a little bit of this Fire Slayer Flesh coming out like that. You see? Adding just a little bit of shading. And you want to use tiny amounts of this at a time. So around here on this little bit, it's a little too much on my brush. What we want to do is just across the flat of the panel, add a little bit of fire slayer flesh coming around like that. Just wick it off. Make sure that there's no dark patches. You see? So we're adding a little bit of color in there. Similar again. Just gonna add a tiny amount here on this corner. Like that. Similarly around here. And a tiny bit like this. Add a little bit to that. And a little bit to that. And then across this area as well. And you can build this effect up as much as you like. So if I add a little bit more there, you see? So what you get now is a really unique looking colour on that cloak. It's nice and shiny. And so with that cloak done, what we now want to do is we want to flip him back around and we want to work on his tabard and this big strap here. And there's a couple of little straps hanging off of the backs here. We've got the little pouches just here. And we've got the gun casing as well. So this little section here, as well as the silencer there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint these all black. And the color that we're gonna use first for this is Basilicarnum Gray. This is gonna act as our little pre-shade. And the reason we're putting this on first is because we want this black to be nice and dark. We don't want it to be a darker gray. We just want it to be a nice dark black. And the Basilicarnum Gray acts as our pre-shade, giving the Black Tan Plus something to cling on to and darkening the overall tone. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to use some Black Templar over the top of all of that Basilicarnum Grey. Like so. And with that Black Templar applied, don't worry too much about highlighting it just yet. We're going to do that a little bit later. What we are going to do is we're going to start firing through a few more of these colours. Now, the colour that we're going to use first is Iron Warriors. We're going to use this to paint in all of the silver details. So we just want to start getting this all over everywhere there that we want to be silver. And this is going to be areas like the sword blade, the mechanical areas of the gun on his back as well as the various pipes and vents and things on his backpack. And so with all of that Iron Warriors applied, what we're now gonna do is gonna take some Volupus Pink I'm going to use that to paint in the soft wrap on the sword blade. And next up, we're going to use some Wraithbone. I'm going to use this to paint in the paper details 
on his armor. And we've got a couple of them. We've got this one here on his arm, on his shoulder pad. We've got the other one at the top of the shoulder pad. And we've got the one on his leg as well. Like that. So it might take a couple of coats just to make sure it's fully covered over. I'll do this little bit here. We want to leave this top bit up here because that's going to be white. Um, it's completely different. <laughs> but looking at the box art once again, you can see just here that that is a papery color and that is white. So we're just going to leave that one for now. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some skeleton horde. I'm going to use this in two places. I'm going to use it firstly on his hair. And we're also going to use it on those paper bits. Again, it's just excluding that bit on the, on the standard. Don't need to do it on there. Because that is, as I said, already going to be white. And next up, we're going to use some apothecary white on that white banner up here. Just like that. Make sure you get the backside as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Fire Slayer Flash. I'm going to use this on his face. Just being really careful around all that detail we've already painted in. And with that Fire Slayer Flash applied, what we now want to do is we want to use some Basilicanum Grey to shade all of the silver. So we just want to take small amounts at a time because we don't want to overwhelm this silver. We don't want to lose it or kind of drown it in this colour. We just want to kind of add a little bit of dark tone to that metal. Like I'm doing here. Similarly on the sword, we don't want to overwhelm the sword. Just want to use big broad brush strokes, make sure we get a nice smooth finish on it. Like that, make sure that we get all of the blade as well, like that. So you just want to go around filling in all of the silver like this. And then we'll come back. And so with all of that done, what we're going to do next is we're going to highlight all of that silver and the colour that we're going to be using for this is Iron Hand Steel. So we're going to do this in a couple of ways. So firstly, <coughs> on areas like the end of the tabard just down here, what we're going to do is just going to pick out the edges like this. What we also want to do is we want to just going up these tabards, we're going to pick out the studs like that. However, on the blade, we're going to do it slightly differently. We're not just going to edge highlight. See, what we want is we want this to be like a really wicked blade, but we want it to have a lot of different silvers going on. So what we want to do is we want to pick out the entire of this kind of flat edge at the top. Like this, just avoiding that central reservation that we've got there. Similarly, on this little area, the little spikes coming off of this sword. Just want to colour them in completely. I'm just going to go down here a little further. Like 
like this. And what I'm also going to do is I'm then going to pick out the sharp edges on the blade as well. Like that. And round here. Like that. And then we've got a sharp edge going across the middle of this bit here. There, like that. So what you'll then get is you'll then get, it's not finished effect. Hang on. <laughs> Let me just pick out this area. Yeah, like that. And then the sharp edge of the blade on the underside as well. So what you then get is you get this kind of brightness on the top then you get the edge highlight under there and then yeah so that's how you want to do the rest of the blade you also want to pick out the power line going down the middle here and next up what we're going to do is we're going to add a highlight of storm host silver just to the sharpest points on that blade particularly along that cutting edge. Like so. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna add a little bit of an energy field to this sword. So the colors that we're gonna use are Ethermatic Blue and Talisar Blue. Now what we wanna do firstly is we wanna take some Ethermatic Blue and we wanna add some of this kind of like we did with the uh, with the gold on the back of the cloak. We want to do this on top of the sword so we want to take the ethermatic blue and just across this area of the blade just want to add a little bit of a blue hue like that. Similarly along here we want to start there and then just pull it up like that. like that and do the same thing on the other side and similarly like that then what we also want to do so you want to take some ethermatic blue. It's just over the top of that central power node. Just want to run this ethermatic blue like this. And then we wash the brush. And we take a small amount of talisar blue. And we add this towards the base whilst it's still wet. Like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to highlight all of that black. And the color that we're going to use first for that is Dawnstone. Now what we want to do is just start highlighting all of the edges on all of the black. Just like this. And with that Dawnstone applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Administratum Grey. I'm going to use this to add a teeny little spot highlight to those blacks. That's what we want to do. So you just want to take a little bit like this and you just want to pick out the sharpest areas on all the black like that. You see? We'll do that again on the next one. So we're going to do it just across here. 
and we'll do a little bit up here as well like so and next up what we're going to do after we've done all of that black is we're going to use some pallid witch flesh and we're going to use this to highlight all of the paper and we're going to use it to highlight his hair as well With that pallid witch flesh applied, what we're now going to do is going to take some Corax white and we're going to use this to highlight the white part of that banner. Like so. So next up, with all of those highlights applied, he's looking pretty awesome. Very targetsy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on his face and the first colour we're going to use is Kislev Flesh. What we want to do is we're going to take a small amount, thin down Kislev Flesh and we just want to start picking out all of his, all of his facial features with it. Like this. Just leaving the kind of wider open spaces where the fire slayer flesh has settled but also just leaving any of the areas where that shade has also settled in the recesses so we're just picking out all of the sharpest points of his face like so and with that kiss left flesh applied what i'm going to do is going to use some flayed one flesh and we're going to use it in much the same manner, and we're going to use it a little bit less. So what we want to do is just want to pick out the absolute sharpest parts of his face. So areas like the tip of his nose, leave a little bit of a gap, and then do the bridge of his nose. Areas like his eyebrows. And next up, once that flayed one flesh is applied, what we want to do is take a teeny tiny amount of wildwood. We want to add this in the recess under his eyelid. Like that. And next up, all we want to do is we want to take some wraith bone and we want to use this to paint in his teeth. like that, as well as the whites of his eyes. Like that. And next up, we wanna take some Volupus pink. Not very much at all, very tiny amount. We wanna use this to bust paint in his tongue. like that and next up we want to use a tiny dot of corvus black to paint in the pupil like that so with that face all done what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the two shiny gems we've got one down here on his leg and we've got one here on the side now what we want to do is we want to use two colours. We want to use Flesh Terrors Red and Wildwood. We want to use them at the same time so that we kind of get a nice little mix blend type thing going on. So firstly what we're going to do is we're going to take the Flesh Terrors Red. We want to apply this all over the gem. We just want to keep it within the realms of the gem. Just don't want to go over the edge as it were, over the boundary. Like that. There's a little bit in the corner. like that. Then you wash the brush and whilst it's still wet, what you do is you take a little bit of wildwood and you just add this wildwood to the top right corner of the gem. And you can build this up 
But what you want is you want a really dark brown going into the red. Like that. And next up, what we want to do is we want to use a small amount of Fire Dragon Bright to draw a little edge highlight around the bottom left corner. Of each of these gems like that. And lastly, just to finish it off, we want to take a small dot of Corax White and put it in the top right corner, right in amongst all of that dark. Wildwood, like that. Just to make them look nice and shiny. And so with both of those red gems done, it's now time to move on to the final section, which is to do all of the freehand, which is all of the text on him, basically. Now, the main place that we're going to focus on is up here on the banner, and that is because we're going to write his name, Tarvitz, up there on that white. I'm just going to roll my sleeves up for this because you know I mean serious business. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown. Now, helpfully, Tarvitz is a word that has seven letters in it. And this means that we can make life pretty easy for ourselves when we're doing this, because what we want to do is we're going to start in the middle by painting in the V with this Saigor brown, like this. And you just want to do it right in the middle. Like that. So now, you know that you've got this side, this area to do tar, and this side to do its. So what we can do is we can just start getting on with that. So I'm going to start this way by painting in an eye like that. And then next up, do a T next to it. And so with Tarvitz written on his back banner top type thing, what we now want to do is just do a little bit more freehand and we still continue with the Saigor Brown. We just want to take a small amount of this on our brush. And on this side here, what we want to do is we're going to add some really small little lines of text, little wavy line going like this. We do one like that. And one like that. And do another little bit down here. And a little bit there like that. Just like that. And similarly on the top here, just wanna add a really small amount. Like that, going across the middle part. Like so. And with all that freehand done, all that's left to do is his base. So the colour that we're going to use first is Black Templar. I'm going to use this all over those rocks that he's standing on. This because we want these to be a nice dark grey. Just gonna get our black templar on a brush and start painting this all over. Try and avoid the skull if you can, but if you do get any black templar on there, don't worry too much about it. You can just neaten it back up with some grey here, and you can move on from there. And next up, we're gonna use some skeleton horde on that skull, just there on the front. And so with those details painted in, before we do any highlights to them, we're just going to dry brush the whole miniature at once. So that'll make things a lot easier for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some Astro Granite Debris. Now, of course, you don't have to do this. You could do this in the same style as the rest of your loyalist emperor's children. 
how many people have got those armies out there. But what I'm going to do is, as I say, is I'm going to use some astro granite debris just to colour in all that negative space on the base. Like so. Then with all that astro granite debris applied, what we now want to do is use some basilicanum grey to shade down all of that astro granite debris. And with that basilicanum grey applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to give that base a dry brush of slanesh grey. Just a very subtle grey highlight over the top of all of that basilicanum grey. Over that black templar. Don't want to do it over the skull just yet. Do something else for that. after this. With that slanesh grey applied, what we now want to do is we want to use some Tyrant Skull. This is just a slightly lighter dry brush over the top, like this, which we can also do over the top of the skull. This just adds a little bit of a spot highlight to all that ground. And lastly, just to finish them off, what we're now going to do is paint in the rim of the base and I'm going to be using some thinned down Corvus Black. And you, of course, can do any colour that you want here. But I'm using Corvus Black because I really like the look of the black rims on the bases. And so with his base complete, Saul Tarvitz, the first loyalist, is now finished. And I think it's going to be very tough to beat. I think it's just the joy of painting this character for me. I got the same feeling when I painted Garrow in his Knight's Errant costume. Um, I really want to paint Loken, but I just, it's, you know, actually holding Tarvitz in my hand, that's the biggest deal for me. It's... Oh, it's been such a joy. Um, I think he might be the jewel of my collection. I, I, I adore it, and I hope you adore it too. Um, and you find this tutorial nice and easy to follow to get your Saul Tarvitz painted. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.